Going Hollywood, A Dinosaur's Dream by Hudson Tabot. Life has been different ever since we moved to New York. It all started when a time-traveling salesman offered seven of us a ride to the 20th century. Today we live and work at the Museum of Natural History with Dr. Miriam Bleem. Helping with her lectures was my forte. As you see, Dr. Bleep lectured one day, dinosaurian feet were not only excellent for speed, but also for... Top dancing! I blurted. Unfortunately, I often got carried away. Sorry, Chief, I stammered. I, I don't know what came over me. All that attention. People admiring me instead of running from me. It, it goes to my head. Well... Get over it. This is the 90s, snapped Dr. Bleed. Everyone else accepts you for who you are now, and you better do the same unless you want a one-way ticket back to the Mesozoic era. In any case, there's someone I want you all to meet. Bon grano, signore dinosauri, said Dr. Bleed's guest. My name is Franco Zipboli, and I'm making a film about the daily life of dinosaurs. We're using the La Brea Tar Pits as our location. And I would like you to join us in California. California? I interrupted. As in Hollywood? I suddenly realized the possibilities. My name in lights. The adoration of millions. A legend in my own time. Now Rex, countered the chief sharply. Don't go getting ideas. We're going to Hollywood strictly in the name of science. Understand? I understood all right. I had my bags packed and was on our bus within a half hour. California, here we come. L.A. at last. And it was my turn to drive. We put the top on to remain inconspicuous. We met with Mr. Zapoli by the tar pits. I was in rare form. And I can do comedy, too, I was saying. Listen to this. What does a triceratops get from scrubbing a coffee shop floor? Dinosaurs, get it? Well, you've been a lovely audience, and now I'd like to sing highlights from Naughty Marita. Hey, you call this a movie set? I call it the pits, get it? Thank you, but that won't be necessary, explained the director. You see, in this film, we're focusing on the smaller, lesser known dinosaurs. I'm calling it the life of Dwig. But I've written a part for you, too. It's on this napkin. The life of Dwig, I muttered to myself. Who's going to come see that? I don't get it. How could they pass over me? The king of the dinos. The tyrant lizard. What's Dwig got that I don't have? Times ten! The life of Dwig, eh? Well, I remember what life was like for all those pipsqueaks when I was boss. Well, I oughta, I'll show them. Rah! Rah! Oops! I was in over my head before I knew what happened. The more I struggled, the deeper I sank. I drifted downward until I came to a door where a frighteningly familiar creature stood. Ready for your big scene, Rex? He called. What big scene? I asked. Where am I? This is the final scene of The Life of Rex. You've done a great job of writing and directing this movie, but I'm afraid your co-star steals it from you. Here he comes now. Hey! I gasped. That's... That's me! What a nightmare. Everywhere I looked, I saw myself staring back at me. This wasn't how I wanted it to end. Hold on there, big fella. I see your point, I sputtered. But can can we talk this over first? There's something really eating at me. I'm sorry for messing things up so much. I don't want to hurt or scare anyone. Really, I don't. But it's tough being a Tyrannosaurus in the 20th century. And let's face it, I still have a lot to learn. Couldn't we forget this movie stuff and just get to kind of know each other? I sure could use a friend. My gigantic other self looked quizzical and then cleared his throat. Well, why not? We could give it a try. Rex? 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 It was 
Dr. Blue's voice. Are you all right, Rex? What? Where am I? I asked, opening my eyes. Is this heaven? Not quite, my boy, answered Dr. Bleeb. But you weren't far from it. We had quite a time pulling you out of that tar pit. You mean, I'm still here? I queezed. Listen, guys, I've been acting like a monster lately, and I'm sorry. I really want to learn from my mistakes. I hope you can forgive me for them. Of course we can, Rex, said Dwig. You're our pal, our buddy, our best friend. And we'd all like to hug you, but would you mind taking a bath first? After dinner, the boys mapped out their tour of the star's home while I continued to scrub myself. It felt good to get clean. The 